Okay. But first of all, I have to bring a lot of greetings from Ian Howard, the principal of the Edinburgh College of Art. We had uh, on the weekend a, a big conference and everybody was jealous that I, should, it should, uh, that I just could leave to Japan. But also a special thank, thank you go to Masayuki because I know that he had to translate my text and I think that was a big, big work. So uh, thank you. It's really incredible what he has done. Today, I will speak as an artist to you and not as, a, as an academic person or as the director of the Research Institute in Edinburgh ICE. And it's very interesting that I just can go on with similar, with similar images as we saw from Norman, Norman's lecture before. I will talk today about the Water Edge, a place to research relationships between nature and culture. Some kind of a poem with the method of sampling God is a DJ. And my whole text, this poem, is about a space I really like. I like also to live in and work in as an artist, is the between. Songs of the thought pervade the world. Birds fly and chant the ocean. Trees are dreaming calmly in green. Tents are standing in the wind, protectively. Animals are wandering long distance. Steadily a tower is growing stone by stone. Wheels are starting to turn. Clouds change the horizon. Various conquer their empire. The dragon still is in deep sleep. I don't know what's wrong that all the indications appear again. I hope they will disappear soon. <laughs> the landscape of a particular culture and society is framed in a biophysical infrastructure. The relationship signifies complex stages of different human interventions over space and time. Organized places are colonized in many ways at many scales through complex adaptations and identity affiliations within the landscape. These affiliations find their expression associated with the landscape elements. Water and the architecture of streams are perhaps one of the clearest interactions of a natural form, a natural phenomenon, to human social relationships. The movement of water is like the dynamic flow of life. It is a symbol of life. So also the resulting place and its identity, the cultural identity of the relationship from the human beings and nature is driven by the dynamic between water and dwelling. The idea of dwelling is de determined where people find their identity to elemental feature within the landscape, where they can find meaning and the dynamic between themselves, what they build, how they live, and the water. And from this, uh, behind, from this um, basis connection, we also have all the images in all the different cultures. So um, when I saw before the river with the boat, the women, all these wonderful images. This kind of images you have everywhere, inside and outside, and it, they will turn up in my lecture too. Water as a form is shaped by its container, the stream bed. The inference above relates to the effective role of the channel 
and its effect upon us. The condition of the ecolo ecological function drives meaning. A community's place and identity space are de derived from significant relationships with necessary elements to create designed form where culture and natural phenomena are joined, interpreted and designed. The songs of the thought aren't listened to anymore, the birds flight still definitely seen, the trees roar wide and powerful, the tents are firmly standing their ground, animals gather in flocks, Steadily the tower is growing stone by stone, wheels are turning swiftly, clouds advance in haste, warriors await their battle, the dragon still is in deep sleep. In 1986 an invitation to an international outdoor exhibition, Reverber, that means marks, in the valley of the Wallis in Switzerland. I was attracted immediately by an incredible clear sign of a thin glitter line coming down from the mountains going into the river Rhone, which later flows on through France to the Mediterranean. Ten dark lines, the bridges, cross the silver line, surrounded always by some houses, some buildings. No idea then about Patrick Geddes' the valley section. I must say, only the ama amazement to have found such a wonderful natural sign. sign. But as I will describe it later on, so many things are connected to each other, appear on different levels again and again, moving around <coughs> like swarms of fishes in the ocean. The exhibition concept was then, for my work, a stream starts his course far above, high up there, wild, until during, during his journey it is dominated and used. It passes by manufactories, bringing energy and creating work, a living place for human beings. It is enveloped and wrapped up more and more, becomes straighter and throws itself completely tamed into the room. The water helps to shape the village, even makes the village whole. Ten bridges bear witnesses, ten passages, which I would accentuate through the assistance of ten plaques with ten signs. The plaques will be attached with two chains at the bridge's parapet. The signs, through their signification and the order of appearance, are destined destined to appoint attention to the water's course, to cause meditation about the collaboration between human and nature. Ten signs, visualized as prints later on, will appear with ten stories in a publication and will go together with this piece. The signs I found randomly by piercing a needle through the pages in the books I was just working then, about Asian fairy tales, mystical stories, religious imagery, especially from the Tibet. One year later, I found all the signs all over during my stay in Japan, in Tokyo, in the everyday world too. The songs of the taught are silent. The birds lose their powers, trees roll loud and wild, Tents are standing protectively in the wind. Animals obediently walk to the pasture. The tower continues to grow stone by stone. The wheels are turning faster. Clouds are playing on the horizon. Various herd into battle. The dragon continues to sleep deeply. Flowing is commonly used to express action in a direct directed space. By flowing is meant the action of our sight when it is guided to travel from one point to another by invitation of emptiness in a void as well as by repulsion from or penetration through the emptiness of mass. 
the factors that determine the processes of seeing, flowing or directing spaces are many. From time to time we should be aware that contrast and complement of light, color, color, texture, shape, sound and balance all play a part in attracting our interest and contribute to the total sequential effect of action and repose in our visual experience. Also, we must admit that sequential effect given by the total visual content of an environment is variably modified by the personal state of mind of an observer. Everything else being equal, however, flowing in that directed space is mainly created by the contrast of openness between two consecutive environments in the conceptual continuity of the memory and it's complementarily guided by solids parallel to the direction of flowing. An open space has more room of bodily and optical interaction and motion and will absorb more attention. A narrow environment will give an impression of congestion and accelerate forward action. In both cases, guidance by solid forms seem to confirm the direction of flowing, but nevertheless serves as a rhythmic link between two separate or interpenetrating volumes of surrounded void. Openness alone suggests uncontrol uncontrolled expansion. Enclosure alone suggests compressed stillness. The extreme of the former will lead to exhaustive action and ultimately to unmeaning, meaningful fatigue, while the extreme of the latter leads to outright lifelessness. Some means are needed to curb open space from flooding and to relieve enclosed space from, stagna from stagnation. The songs of the taught are un unknown, birds are lost in the wind, trees desperately strike out, the tents now are sinking, flocks of animals are roaming the world, the tower is standing. The wheels turn more and more quickly every day, the clouds are grey and blue, the barriers went further than they intended, the dragon sleeps calm and deep. Lifeliness always needs the potential of becoming. It seems that one way to curb flowing is by holding the environment together by a tangible mass such as a line of trees, which is in perpendicular relation to the direction of flow. The result achieved by the arrangement is an effect between flowing and non-flowing. Sight will then follow the perimeter of the environment then temporarily being held from crossing the boundaries of the environment and, and it will swing back to cross it once the initial curve is overcome. The attention is held in suspension and prevented from evaporating in endless actions. An opposite situation of equilibrium in the flowing space of seeing is a case in which an environment is visually confined in almost every direction. The intangible content needed in such a case is the feeling of some opening to relieve the compression. A series of lateral plans, either a row of buttresses or a Venetian blind is one means, which could imply the lateral openness beyond them to lessen the longitudinal action squeezed by lateral confinement. The sight following this action and reaction will thus be successfully attracted by the brightness of the lateral plans and will be tempted to go laterally but always swings back and proceeds to the next intangible openness implied by brightness. A rather confined environment hence becomes a visual volume of melting softness. All this can be seen as a broad description of not only the relation between nature and dwelling, architecture and space, but also it functions at the level of conceptual continuity of the culture conceptualization 
sequential effect usually is subjective. It is always renewed and unfinished. Since music is psychologically existing but is physically or visually a non-being, it is a wonderful metaphor for flowing architectonic continuity. Painting and sculpture, however, are physically and visually existing, but psychologically are often non-beings. So how can visual art start to flow? Do it be a part in the stream of life? A question that has become to be more and more important and interesting for me over the last 15 years. The songs of the Todd are completely forgotten. The birds leave the land, trees are sick, tents cave in soundlessly. Flocks of animals overrun the land, the tower is a shadow against light. Wheels thunder through day and light, clouds are hanging heavily from the sky, various prevail the war, the dragon still sleeps deeply. Art should explain the world, perhaps a too big duty. On the other hand, with art, the artwork still existing from cultures long disappeared, we have something to look at which is not moving away, which seems to be static and so we can move around with our thoughts and sometimes also physically. But today to make a cha change in the way we look at or how we watch things, into seeing things as they are and as they relate to all other things in the world is always has been difficult. Also, if you think, if you have to see what means nature, you will have problems. But the globalized world has brought also into the discussion new instruments, new understandings, and it has brought in also a better understanding not only of distinctions but also of the need to cross the borders in science, in art, in politics, etc. To change the understanding of the individual, not only in my home culture, the culture of the Western European world. On old world maps, map makers wrote, there be dragons. In this way describing the unknown as often frightening. But when then explorers penetrated every area of the world, the monster marked patches disappeared. But there are still a lot of dragon infested areas in our mental map of how the different parts of the world work together. How all the immense range of cultural expressions, for example, fit together. From the universe under a microscope, the universe locked into a cell to the new world of the internet. And we as actors and viewers in between, but also part of it, with borders no longer clearly defined to show and to know where the networks end and where we are. What, for example, I have to do with the wonderful blonde women in the painting we just saw. It was much easier in past times to know where we were and where were the dragons. But now, the good news is that recently scientists have been learning to map our interconnectivity in many different fields. Their maps are shedding new light on our web-like universe. Many surprises and challenges are found simultaneously challenged and insights we wouldn't have dreamed of 10 years ago. Maps of companies connected by trade or ownership have traced the trail of power and money in Silicon Valley. Maps of interactions between species in ecosystems have demonstrated humanity's destructive impact on the environment. Maps of genes working together in a cell have provided insight into how cancer works. So we will try to draw new and different maps of cultural manifestations also, and art expressions, because the real surprise of the recent years has come from placing maps side by side. Just as diverse humans have skeletons you can't distinguish, 
All these newly discovered maps follow a common blueprint. A string of recent breathtaking discoveries has forced us to acknowledge that amazingly simple natural laws govern the structure and evolution of all the complex networks that surrounds us or also in the culture and social context create us. The songs of the thought aren't to be found anymore. Birds suffocate in the mud. Trees scream silently with green leaves. Tents are no more in use. Flocks of animals run into death. The tower stands alone. Wheels keep on turning widely. The clouds continue their route over the ocean. Various call to battle. The dragon is awake. These new views that scientists and artists are now working with are naturally not at all new. But today we have to deal with the immense complexities of levels and layers of a globalized world together with the microcosmos of the private destiny. Everything and everybody is interacting with a huge number of others, of other pieces of a complete universal jigsaw puzzle. This sounds very easy, but it's very difficult to understand. And as I just had a question some months ago in Edinburgh, a young woman asked me, but you are talking about the globalization and how it affects the art world, but what's about Edinburgh? So still for many of us, all these new insights are outside of us and we are not part of it. But I think that's something, it's not easy to understand, but if you get it, it's wonderful to live in. Networks, not only intellectual and mental networks, are present everywhere. All we need is an eye for them, because also the older static explanations for the world are no longer adequate. So all these insights from different science involved in global processes, in natural science, economies, politics, we can now try to use for our field of artistic thinking also. We can leave behind the logic of things going from A to B as the only tool to work with. We can start to move around in a net knowing that for every second of our life, we are part of it on a micro and macro basis. Because being part of a moving and living net of energy flows, we do not have to fear getting lost. These ideas to connect different levels of culture and of society, to get a more precise idea about new insights, to have a better platform, to get more knowledge, appear and disappear. So for example, their ideas are present in the thinking of a great German curator and academic Alexander Dorner, who was driven out by the Nazis uh, before the Second War to find exile in the United States. Not because he was Jewish, but because he had this new understanding of the interactivity between exhibited objects and the space in which they are shown, and naturally the interactions between public, artist, and curator. His understanding of the flowing, moving world of mental and spiritual energy being also inside of objects is absolutely contemporary. So perhaps real glimpses of understanding are always contemporary, <coughs> as long as they are on the move and not static. Not describing something, but creating it again and again. And I think this <coughs> Three days with Patrick at his work is an, a very wonderful example of this. So we could perhaps see an artwork as a dense connection and coming together of millions of energy streams and which appears in front of us as a static object, not moving quite, appearing as an empty screen for us to put our own <coughs> meaning or understanding on it. Just looking at an object can be, in a way, very boring. But if we see the work in the space of a civilization, 
and the surrounding <coughs> culture connected perhaps to a biography, which is also like a static object, leaving out the most important parts, the movements and changes, also the dark side, or perhaps the negative, then it becomes exciting. So we really can look back to Patrick Geddes, to the ideas of <coughs> Rudolf Steiner, Charles Henry, also to Joseph Boyce, back to some of these wonderful bachelor machines, as Harry Seaman described them in uh, his <coughs> exhibition in 1972, in, to, in, into all the systems. And because we know now how to move them, they start to be alive again. To be today an artist, creating ideas, artworks, situations, and to be a curator, looking at objects, but also at situations from where the objects are coming, also from where landscape is coming, because landscape is a culture artifact. To be a writer, for example, to put into a verbal language all this moving, changing visual phenomena, we get all the time, without knowing it, to use the cultural basis of the humanity to work with. It is an incredible chance this is the new place of the between, not the void, and a frightening place where the dragons come to attack you, but is a place where you can find your way through moving, choosing things, losing things, and ideas, changing places. And as Alan mentioned it this morning, he was speaking about the captain going out of the ship and have uh, obs uh, observed the situation. I think it's much easier because we are the ship, we are the captain, but we also are the sea and the air together, and also the dolphins playing around us. It is like a little bit dreaming with open eyes and an open mind. The song of the thought desperately couldn't be found. The birds fall, the trees dry out before our eyes. The tents dismantled easily. The animals are useless. The tower collapses without laments. The wheels splutter, they are screaming. The clouds assemble in gray. The various take up their arms. The dragon starts to see. My idea of this Water Edge project, which I'd like to share with you in Yamaguchi now, will seek through an interdisciplinary process of creative and critical investigation, description, reflection, and analysis to explore the possibilities of revelatory assessments of specific riverine and estuary landscapes. A more expli explicit text about the project exists but is too long to be presented at the moment. To make it short, it's the question that so many people, for example, live in cities and feel not really happy anymore. So they say we go to we live we go to the country now and they they just move from the city to the country. But what they do, they take their city attitudes and their city life into the country and have no more roots with the country because it's only an idea, the nature and the country. And so what happens, they have no connection, no roots with the culture of the place they move in. And so you have this, especially around rivers and uh, outside of big cities, you have this no man's land. And that was something I thought it's a, an interesting aspect of a cultural uh, of culture, uh, culture lost, and how can artists or writers or musicians, together with the people, work uh, find a way to work out how these people can really live in the place they moved in? This will involve empirical and imaginative modes of research and study in the examination of complex culture and natural spatial em elements layers and relationships. The Water Edge project proposes a revelatory landscape assessment as the platform for investigations about possible ways of mediations between artists, musicians, curators and landscape architects in an interdisciplinary process. 
I also especially are interested in the space where women live. It sounds perhaps uh, strange because naturally women always live with the families and their husbands or the men together. But as I learned just a year ago, also in Cairo, I learned how big the difference is between public and private space, between the public and the private space for women and for men. And I think uh, here in Japan you have similar things too, and perhaps also hidden uh, in a perfect way also in European cultures, especially if you are not, if you are living in a country and you are not uh, a resident of the culture or you are not born there. So we would like also to find uh, where people, what's the connection of the land is. If you have no right to be there, do you, are you connected to the land or where, where are your connections? So we naturally start an interdisciplinary process but this is not meant simply sharing and exchanging findings in the end of the process, but as the means to the collaborative exploration of creative questions from the beginning of the common working process. The whole complex of cultural and natural spatial, spatial elements of the layers and relationship between the different elements in the situation will be examined with empirical studies <coughs> and in explorative and expository exhibitions. This collaborative project will be undertaken at selected urban coastal and stream edges. So perhaps we can add in the future to places in Scotland, in England and in Holland, places in Japan too, who knows, because Japan as an <coughs> island has a very strong connection to the river, the river go going into the sea. Describing and assessing landscape in its elemental relationships through an interdisciplinary art and design framework initiates an innovative process of revelation. Developing such a holistic landscape assessment through shared interpretative experience can create a new and revelatory focus for writing, curatorship and exhibition making. I can add also music, I think. Art is always a revelatory process, creating multiple possibilities of meaning. It has the capacity to make the invisible visible. Art and design are <coughs> often guided by the unseen. They discover, that this, they discover what is unforeseen. And often art is the best way to hide things. It is the task of artists, designers, writers, musicians to comprehend patterns, discover meanings, and communicate understanding. But not only in ex expl explaining it in, verbal, in a verbal language, but find a way to express it in a visual language. Something is, becomes more and more important because still now, for example, the internet is a verbal language, language place. And real visual language, for example, for the web, has just to be created. The actions of drawing, mapping, modeling, marking, and making are methods and modes of visualiz visualizing and externalizing those understandings. The artist, the musician, the landscape architect, the writer, and the creator all exist as an innovative consti constituency providing an interdisciplinary approach to assessing and interpreting places. The song of the taught can't be found anymore. The birds are gone. The trees have killed themselves. The tents are only a memory. The animals are unrecognizable. The tower stones are lying around. The wheels are breaking. The clouds treat them silently. The various make war against each other. The dragon hears many things. One outcome of this research would be the proposition of new design alternatives for an aesthetic, integrative, and active engagement with place and space. 
Such direction of landscape assessment illuminates the design process and highlights critical and creative issues in ways that makes it possible for the public to be a critical participant in particular settings. By disclosing, interpreting and communicating the dynamic dimension of elemental landscape relationships, design promotes an intelligibility that stimulates inquiry and further action. Because I think today we have to, we have to also understand that we are all together and the public also know something. They also, the people, they come to see a show, they have a knowledge. And so this thinking that being an artist or being a scientist, an, acad an academic, that we know more than the others. I think we have to forget about it and think that we can share different kind of knowledges. Our research approach values the contribution of artists whose interventions in landscape, especially with regards to the placement of expressive objects, are sometimes viewed, viewed as minimal and simplistic, and as being inconsequential in developing programs or creating new and holistic possibilities of landscape representations. This project sees the vision and thought of the artist as instrumental in the total process of working in discovering, deciphering, conceptualization, and creating something integral to the meaning of the landscape. It is a belief that art, design, and science may together discover or uncover the connections between aspects of the cultural natural layering of the landscape, seen too often as discrete. The songs of the Todd are missed by many. The birds fly in the reserve. The trees are gray and obscure. Tents are searched for. Animals are finally sheltered. The tower stones are scattered. Wheels now are hard to find. The clouds can only shine. The barriers finally grow tired and the dragon begins to stand. I'm not keen as an artist to find conclusions, results now. It is more important to raise deep questions, many questions connected to all the various fields all of us are working in. Some of them I got in the last months. How is an interdisciplinary approach to be created that can utilize collaboratively the different languages of the artists, the landscape architect, the curator and the scientist? How can we build bridges between different cultural languages from the beginning? How are the investigative and mediational aspects of what is known as a revelatory landscape assessment to be integrated in the examination and measurements of places with many natural, historical and cultural layers and diverse contemporary uses? What critical filters and techniques of analytic cross-sectioning do we need to develop in response to specific sites with different biophysical and cultural bases? How are the new perspectives and new modes of expression for artists, musicians, landscape architects created, created within the collaborative logic that informs the revelatory assessment and the current cross-disciplinary perception of landscape? What kind of information will be needed to create new ways of describing, analyzing and interpreting landscape and in the mediations of curating and writing? Many other questions arise. A wonderful thought to move on with more and more questions, to forget about eternal answers. The answer always as a start for the new question. So the water edge as a meeting point, or to say it in a more perhaps poetic way, walking, walking the shingled beach at the edge of the world, where the endless sea washes the pebbled bank, a night full of dreams, Walking the shingle beach, the space between layers of the real, the edge of the world, a never-ending music where parallel waters meet, river and sea in constant turmoil, elemental lovers, the music of the water. Different coming in and going out, like breathing, river and sea, man and woman, meeting at places of eternal changes light as glittering jewelry all over.
carried from the endless rocking of the shingle, the ceaseless music of the sea. I'd like to thank uh, Jeff Loxton, an American landscape architect, who will work with me on this uh, project. My friend Ed Herling from the KCO Foundation and Montreal Foundation in Holland. But also, um, not really directly personally, Albert Laszlo Barabasi for his brilliant ideas about the new science of networks. Amos E. Tiao Chang for the wonderful thoughts about the Tao of architecture. Many thanks go also to all the colleagues in Scotland and in Yamaguchi making possible that we can share our ideas and thoughts with them. The song of the thought are sung with caution. The birds try to fly, the trees stay grey and dark, the tents are built up again, animals are animals again, the tower stones are barely visible, wheels are wheels again, clouds with rain move on, the barriers all fell, but now the dragon is here. And it's wonderful that randomly I found first the little images, then I had ten lines, and I just the, the little story inside of it created itself. And just now you heard before about um, all these wonderful stories about the, the bride. And you know, in many cultures, the thought is the animal of female wisdom, and the dragon is a symbol for female spirit. But all these things are part of the inside world, but also of the outside world. And so I think the wonderful thing is if in a conference where people don't know each other in the issues and in the images, they come together. Also, what you saw now here, I have to really to excuse myself, I had a video, but the video never arrived. So I just put some of my own artworks together, some pictures I just had in my computer. And perhaps you get an idea that for me, my life, my world, my different worlds, my work, and sometimes also the words I try to, to say in still, for me, difficult English because my mother tongue is German, that all goes together. And I hope um, Patrick Geddes would have accepted this little lecture. Thank you. just nearest the microphone. Uh, I, I, I was fascinated by what, what you said, Marianne. Uh, and uh, in a way, I suppose this is as much an observation as anything else, but um, I, I, I felt uh, your, this notion of the water's edge and your poetical references to it resonated uh, to an extraordinary degree with Rabindranath Tagore. And there's uh, one poem by him that begins, on the seashore of endless worlds, children meet, which perhaps brings uh, a, a whole lot of different things together. Um, and uh, just the way you, you wove the different elements together, I found uh, uh, not only interesting, but also moving. And I think uh, your ending, where you said, uh, perhaps Geddes would have approved, or I forget your exact words, uh, well, I think he would have. So thank you very much. Um, 
Yes, I must say I'm a trained academic, but I saw that it's not my world to get words from others. I always use words as an artist. And so, so often I find something, you know, like I put needles in a book and then make a poem of it. And then later on I see that I can find it in other places. And I must say, I, always, I was not always never shocked about that. I was happy because I thought, I live in the same world. We all live together. So I can find things another person in India or in Africa find in the same moment. And uh, I couldn't understand why, for example, my students always tell me, oh, that looks like a McNoble. Oh, now I did a Sigma Polke. And, oh, now I have to go and find something else. Naturally, you like to have your own word, your own artwork. But I think, so I, when I, I heard these stories, from, uh, you know, this Celtic imagery, I thought, oh, and I come now with a, a little tiny poem I found with sticking on words, and it's, in a way it has the same background. And I think that's today wonderful, that we can see what's under, also under Patrick Geddes' structures. You know, under Rudolf Steiner's structures. And uh, I think it would be interesting to connect that to the bachelor machines, too. Because I can't be a bachelor, you know, never. <laughs> so it's something, perhaps, it, uh, I hope that also t uh, this uh, Patrick Geddes ideas get more and more connected to other places and to other voices. Because naturally, it's, I hope the next, in the next, uh, meeting about Patrick Geddes, other female voices will appear too. You know, not only because I'm a woman, but I like to have this connection between the brides and the tots and the dragons together with us today. え、非常にえ、他にえ、どなたか使い、使い壊れることがあったらちょっと使い壊れてほしいんですが。というえ、こういったあの、パトリック・ゲディスというあの、トピックにおいて、あの、
あ、あの後ろの方後ろの女性の方。Thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. Uh, uh, you said that、uh, the women should participate more about this kind of project. And I'm not an artist or anything, but uh, uh, I, uh, and in the volunteer level, I organize、uh, exchange programs with artists or artworks、uh, between、uh, two countries, between Japan and、uh, right now, specifically with Australia. And I use currents. Uh, in a, when I have a project, currents is the, the stream.、Yes. So I really like the, the idea you use the water edge and the concept of, of water streaming, starting from a very small stream and going to the water,、uh, going to the sea. And uh, uh, so I, I love the, the, the concept of currents myself because、uh, sometimes it's very small and sometimes it becomes wild. Sometimes it stops, you know, the streaming, but it comes back again and it connects many things.、Mm. So、it, it is not a, a question or anything, I just wanted to say the comment. Thank you, Thank you very much indeed. I was an artist, but I was an artist, and I was an artist, and I was an artist. えー、交流するプロジェクトをあの時々やるんですけどその時にあのその企画に「カレンツ」流れるという字を書くんですけれども名前をつけていますでその,その,あの名前がとても自分では気に入ってるんですけれどもそれがあの、えー、今おっしゃってたあのとウォーターエイジとかそういうことにつながるなと思ったもんですからちょっとコメントをしました以上です。Thank you very much for your presentation.